Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg. I often hear a lot of confusion and questions about how to punch in with Logic Pro when you're using Universal Audio Unison plugins. In this video, I want to share with you my workflow for monitoring headphone mixes and punching in with Unison plugins when I'm tracking in Logic Pro X. Here I've got Logic and Console opened up side by side. Let me start by walking you through my setup in Logic. Now, in my audio preferences, I've got software monitoring disabled, and I have independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips, and I'll show you why that's important for me in a moment. And in IO assignments, I have this set to output 17 and 18, which is a virtual output. Now, when I play back my project here, you're going to see it arrives at the virtual output 1, 2, and then to the main out, and that's what I'm monitoring is the mix. Now, if I go directly to output one, two, and hit play. It's just going directly to the main output. So what's the big advantage of going to the virtual outputs first? Well, it's a bit more monitoring control, but in my case, I like it because of these videos that I do for video capture, because the output of logic is arriving at an input in console, it gives me a bit more routing flexibility. So this is kind of an optional thing. You don't have to do it, but I find it useful for myself. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at my mixer and logic, and I'll show you how I have my headphone routing set up. Now by default in my templates, I set up on every channel strip, a send going to headphone one and headphone two. Now in modern versions of logic, you can route directly to a physical output. So I can route these directly, for example, to QMix one and QMix two, but I'm doing it the old fashioned way. I'm going first to a bus. So everything here, headphone one, headphone two, all these sends are arriving here, headphone one, headphone two, and then they're outputting to QMix one and then QMix two, and then these are the physical outputs. So I default by leaving them all in post fader mode, and I option click to snap them to unity gain so that whatever my levels are will get mirrored to the headphones. Now, of course, I can modify that, but by default, it starts off as mirroring my main mix. So all my logic tracks are coming through here, to headphone one, two, and going out to QMix one, two. And even my reverb, I have headphone one, two sends on them. Any subgroups, I set it all up going to headphone one, two. So now getting back to QMix, I've got my headphone mixes coming from Logic and they're getting routed to Q1 and Q2. And if I look here, I have Q1 going to my headphone one output on my Apollo and Q2 going to headphone two on my Apollo. So I have two separate headphone mixes. Now when I'm tracking vocals, I normally track on the analog eight input. Now I mute this over here so that it's not going to come through my monitors as I'm working. And then here is where I have things set up for the reverb and for the headphones. So I'm sending this vocal to Q1 and Q2. So let's say for the purposes of this example, we're going to be monitoring through Q2. So I have them up here. So now Q2 is receiving this signal as well as everything from logic that's coming out of here. So if the singer says, I need more of myself, what I can do is just bring this down in logic, the amount I'm sending to the QMix, and it'll just lower the overall mix of the music. And then I can just turn up the gain on the knob on the Apollo, the headphone amp. So more me, less music is simple over here. And if he says, well, or she says, I want, you know, less drums or more piano, then I simply go into the individual channel strip and can dial more or less up of what I want to send to contribute to that QMix. So global music mix here, individual elements on the channel strips, and then on the vocal channel strip itself, send to QMix 2. Now, the singer wants to hear reverb in the headphones. I'm setting up a send here to an aux within console. And here's my aux return where I've got, for example, pure plate. I like this just for a sort of general all-purpose monitoring reverb. And then here I send to Q2 and Q1 optionally as well. So let's just review what's coming through the headphones now. We have our internal mix in Logic. That's getting sent out of here to QMix 2. So that's arriving here and that's going to the headphones. I then have the vocal channel over here with the output muted, but that's being sent to Q2. So that's going to the headphones also. I have my send going to aux 1 and I have this muted too because I don't want to hear this in the mains either. And then this is getting routed to Q2. So the singer is hearing backing tracks, his direct vocal, plus some reverb. I've got my unison channel strip set up and in place here. I hit record and logic, everything is good, life is beautiful. Now, what happens when we need to punch in? All right, so for example, here I've got a vocal track. So let's say I wanna punch in on this last phrase over here. 
what I can do is record enable the track. And this is where that independent monitoring level for recording and playback is useful. Let's say I'm playing back like that. And when I'm recording, he wants to hear in his headphones some of the existing vocal at a quieter volume. So I can have two separate levels like that. So here's the scenario. We're here, he wants to punch in on this phrase, or she wants to punch in there. I'm gonna back it up, give him some pre-roll, hit record. Now when I hit play, he's gonna be hearing the entire music mix in the background. He's gonna be hearing this vocal because I've got some level being sent up here. And I've also got reverb in his headphones. Now, how do I do that? Well, I've got to send here to the reverb. And normally when software monitoring is disabled, sends don't work. But I've got a send here to the reverb. And then here on the reverb strip, I've got a reverb that I like, and I'm sending that to headphone one too. So we're not recording yet. We're actually just playing, even though it's record enabled. We're playing back. So he's gonna hear the existing vocal track or she's gonna hear the existing vocal track and they'll also hear the reverb too, because we're only playing back, even though it's record enabled, we're playing back. So this is getting sent. And then from the reverb, it's getting sent to the headphones. So here I'm using a different reverb than what the singer has been hearing when they're monitoring. Now, is that an issue? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Personally, I don't find it a big deal. The singers don't seem to mind. I have a third party reverb set up and it's good enough. But if you want to have the exact same reverb, what you can do is go into for example, pure plate and go at the bottom here and go copy settings. And then back in logic on this reverb channel, you can set up the exact same one if you want. I have it here just to show you. I don't use it normally, but I use that and then go paste settings. There, I've got my exact same settings. So I can even get this pre-roll reverb to be the exact same if I want. So for this to work, you got to make sure that you have allow quick punch enabled, quick punch in. So let me just set the input here to the input that I'm going to be recording on, which would be mic line eight. So the idea is you're playing along, the singer is monitoring the pre-roll in his headphones. And then when you're ready, boom, you just drop in to record and the input is being recorded. Everything's golden with the headphone mix. He's now going to be monitoring the reverb in console. And then you just stop and you're done. There's your punch in. So it's that simple. That's really all there is to it. And don't forget, once you've got things set up here, you can always save this as a template and you're good to go each time. So if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was useful for you. This is Eli Kranzberg. See you for more next time.